welcome to the final of this year's World's Strongest Man competition. Each year, not only do we bring you the excitement of the competition, but we also take you to some great locations. And this year is no exception. The Statue of Liberty, the Empire State Building. We're in Las Vegas. We've been in the desert for some really nail-biting heats and some big surprises. The reigning champion Magnus Ver Magnussen didn't make it through, along with last year's second and third placed men. That means we're certain to see a brand new World's Strongest Man this year. And I'm here in one of the most famous streets in the world, ready to explore all the glamour and glitz of a city that never sleeps. And as for Paul Dickinson, I haven't got a clue where he is. Isn't that absolutely typical? There's Philippa with all the glitz and glamour. And here I am, stuck in one of the seediest joints in town. But with me, I have all of the men who want to be called World's Strongest Man this year. How are you doing, guys? Hi. Now, there are 10 of them in all. There are eight who qualified from our four heats, and we have our two Americans who came through from their own Strongest Man competition. They're all going to take part in eight massive tests of strength to decide the overall title. Now the point scoring situation is very simple, unlike some of the gambling games here in Las Vegas. If you win an event, you get 10 points. If you come second, you score nine. And then it's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one if you come last in an event. Of course, the man who accumulates the most points will be the winner. And the man who can withstand the incredible physical and mental pressure the best will certainly hit the jackpot here in Las Vegas and will become World's Strongest Man 1997. Yuko Ahala is in the final for the very first time and is one of the smallest men here. His performances in the heats were a big surprise to everyone. Raymond Spugmanis is in the final for the second year in a row. The Latvian super heavyweight weightlifting champion is in great shape. Derek Boyer represents Fiji with a lot of passion. In the heats, he looks stronger and fitter than ever before, and that spells danger for the rest. Chief Iron Bear Collins carries his heritage with great pride. He's one of the most experienced men here, and that should give him a real boost. Sven Carlsen's Viking power carried him through the heat with ease. Norway have never won this contest, but this man gives them the best chance ever. Thorfi Olofsson carries on Iceland's great tradition in the final through legends John Paul Sigmundsson and Magnus Ver Magnussen. What a pedigree. Heinz Olesch is Germany's great hope for the title. This giant of a man perhaps has his best chance ever of fulfilling his personal dream. Mark Filippi is a professional strength coach with his home here in Nevada. Local support should give him a big psychological edge. Fleming Rasmussen finished just outside the top three in Mauritius and looked awesome in the heats here. That means his confidence is very high. Finally, Magnus Samuelsson's goal in life is to become the strongest man in the world. His determination will always be a danger to everyone else. This is the state line between California and Nevada crossed by Interstate 15, a highway used by tourists and truck drivers alike. If you've ever wondered what happens to those huge American trucks when they break down, Here's your answer. But what happens if one of these things breaks down? Well, if you've got one of our competitors nearby, you'll be absolutely fine. In a traditional start to the world's strongest man final, our men pull this 23-ton truck all the way down the 25-metre course. It's an intimidating event, especially for first-time finalists. You're up against a tough bunch of guys, aren't you? Yeah, I sure am. Got my work cut out for me. I've seen them. They're all good. There's no slouches here. You know, some of the favorites got knocked out, but there's good guys to replace them. Are you looking forward to it? Uh, very much, especially today, because it's too good event for me today, and I feel it's important to have a good start. So. Magnus, you missed out on last year's final. How do you feel about being in this year's? Relieved. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, and I hope I have a good run. Torfi Olafsson, the very first man to go, prowling around looking nervous, and Carlson, a few last minute preparations. It's very quiet here this morning, but soon the competition is going to explode into life as the final gets underway. Getting hooked up. 
Very thick leather harness they're wearing. Derek Boyer without his war paint for the first time. So Toffee at 25 stone starts. And it's amazing how our country, so small as Iceland, can keep turning out these strong men. They really do enjoy these events of power and super strength. He's staying very low and that's important. He's got to drive the legs. Toffee's going well, he's got about 10 metres to go. He's wearing one of those plasters across his nose to help him breathe. I hope it works. And it's about now the body is starved of oxygen. The step's getting very, very much shorter and he's beginning to stand up. The front of the lorry must cross the line and that truck is grinding to a halt. The bumper's got about a foot to go. There goes the Hooter 77.48. Oh boy. And Torfi is absolutely shattered. Fleming Rasmussen locked on. And he actually said he was looking forward to this competition. It's a real strain to get it started. He's stuttering just a little bit. Wearing ordinary training shoes. Some of the competitors are going to be wearing big boots for extra grip. Oh, but he's really beginning to motor along now. He weighs 23 stones and he's pulling 23 tons. It's an enormous weight, but once you've got it rolling, it begins to look very easy. If you can keep this sort of form going to the line, it's going to be incredibly fast. He's staying much lower than Torfi. It's a wonderful time for Rasmussen. 47.84, 30 seconds ahead, an approval all round. The massive frame of Heinz Olesch getting ready. He finished second in his heat to Magnus Samuelsson. Well, that's a good place to watch. What a time it is to beat. And Heinz Olesch is a very experienced man in these events. And he certainly will have prepared well for this. I've got a feeling he's wearing climbing boots for extra grip. He's got his knees very heavily strapped for extra support as well. There are the boots. He's going along quite nicely. That's Brindis, his coach and girlfriend. He's going to miss out on the lead, I think, but it's still going to be very, very fast. Rasmussen still in first place. And once again, the last few meters very hard indeed. 53.15 at the moment in second place. A good start for Heinz Olesch. You're looking forward to it? When I see how the guys look afterwards, not, <laughs> not really. What about this first event? Is it going to be a tough one for you? Uh, it's never been good to me before, so I don't really hope for too much here. Before we see the Norwegian, we can have a look back at four men who didn't complete the course. Raymond's Bugmanus came very close, but came unstuck just two and a half meters from the line, which eventually put him back in seventh place. The USA's Mark Filippi couldn't really get going at all. Despite his massive arms and legs and a 21 stone frame, he only completed 17.2 meters and would finish last. Derek Boyer looked incredibly psyched up in the heats, but here he was strangely subdued. 21 meters would keep him back in eighth place. And Harold Collins, who was complaining that he was still suffering from the American qualifying heats, held here a fortnight ago. He too felt the 23 tonne load was just too much on the day. The result just over 20 metres and he would finish ninth. Sven Carlsen striding out to the start, but not particularly looking forward to this one. Fleming Rasmussen on the right, next to Riku Kiri, who amazingly didn't qualify for the final. Last year's runner-up. Now, what can Viking power do this time? One thing Sven is not short of is confidence in his own ability. And he's not slow in coming forward. He's got away to a good start. Taking small steps, that's important. And the constant attentions of Nana, his wife, 
Carlson has such a desire to win, no matter what the event. And Filippi has certainly learned just how hard this final is going to be. Carlson getting on with the job and chasing the times of Olesh and the leader Rasmussen. Well, the Dane is still in the lead, but Sven could go second. He's got to keep driving for the line. 52.55, he's done it. What a showman this man is. The crowd love him. Just two more men to go, and it's Yuka Ahala getting ready now. Now, in terms of body weight, this man is only 20 stones, and actually the smallest man here. But this is the guy who effectively put pay to the chances of England's Bob Weir of qualifying in the final heat. And this man, well, his performances were very gutsy indeed. And after a slow start, he's beginning to accelerate away, straining every muscle in his body. That's Hanalina, his girlfriend. It's beginning to look agony for Ahala. His heart must be racing now. The muscles will be tightening up. And these last few yards once again are the worst. It's painfully slow. Over a minute now. He looks absolutely shattered. There's about an inch to go. 68.69, that puts him in fourth place. And Jimmy R. Marshall just helping steady him. The doctor is there too. And Hanalina looking concerned. Magnus Samuelson, the last to go. The tallest man in the competition at six feet six. Ahala getting back some precious oxygen. Samuelson guaranteed to put on a good show. You keep your fingers crossed. Uh, he did a very good truck pull in the past. And he got the guts. He's going to need some guts to win this one. And already Magnus gritting his teeth. Those massive arms are bigger than a lot of people's legs. He's moving well. He could do with staying lower. That's Kristen, his wife. Samuelson moving very well now, about halfway up the course. He hasn't finished yet. I'll tell you what, it's going to be very close. He must keep the momentum going, and he can definitely challenge the Dane. He's slowing a little, Rasmussen has won it. But the Swede is in second. What a finish to event one. A disappointing start for the Americans, but Fleming has a new wife in Denmark, and she'll definitely be joining in the celebrations. Fleming, congratulations, a great start for you. Uh, one down and seven to go. <laughs> Now it's the log lift and the competitors going in reverse order from the result of event one. Mark Filippi, he's got a lot to prove now. The log is 105 kilos, that's about 16 and a half stones. And I'm sure because this man is a good weightlifter, the first few will be easy enough, but once fatigue sets in, then the fun starts. He gives a little push with his legs there. Mark is obviously very fit and strong. He's trained a lot of strong men in his time, as well as being a fine athlete himself. His wife and family are here too to support him. They'll be shouting for Dad somewhere in the crowd. He's going very well, that's six so far. He's got a 60 second time limit, so speed is very important too. He's just over six feet tall and a very, very solid 21 stones. He's an extremely stocky figure. He's obviously tiring now, but this is a much better performance than in the first event. That's good, he's got 11, but he may be running out of time. Yes, he has, and a rapturous cheer for the American. When we've seen this competition before, there have always been two logs and the competitors lifted side by side. But all of the athletes insisted they use the same one. So while we're watching Derek Boyer, we can also see Chief Iron Bear, Harold Collins of the United States. And Collins knew that he had to pull something out of the bag here. 
Like Mark Filippi, he hadn't got the United States away to a particularly good start in the truck pool where he finished ninth, but he was really flying on this one. Derek Boyer came eighth in the truck pool and by contrast was looking sluggish, but perhaps being a couple of inches taller, he found this event more difficult. Because of the time limit of just one minute, we certainly got the impression that this event could be won or lost by a very slim margin. The faster you could keep going, the more chance of victory there was. Collins was really piling on the repetitions and heading comfortably towards a respectable total. Boyer, a little way behind and beginning to feel the strength flowing away from him in this intense heat. The will to get that one extra repetition from these guys is staggering and so vital for the extra points. Boyer finished with nine, but Harold Collins' total of 12 put him on top of the leaderboard. Raymond Bergmanis was next, and this man fancying his chances here because of his expertise in weightlifting. And we can have a look at the Icelander, Torfi Olofsson, and just compare the styles of the two. There wasn't much difference between them, but surprisingly, it was Torfi who was the faster. Bergmanis, still a comparative novice at these strength events, despite being in his second final. He finished ninth in the Olympic Games Super Heavyweights in the Snatch and the Clean and Jerk. He certainly had better weightlifting technique, but in terms of raw strength, Olafsson had the edge. Korfi Olafsson, a great beast of a man, weighing in at over 160 kilos. Towards the end of the 60 seconds, though, Torfi was fading fast, whereas Bergmanis just kept grinding out the repetitions. Almost a case of the tortoise and the hare. Once Olafsson had reached 10 repetitions, he tried for one more, but it wasn't allowed by the referee. Bergmanis was finishing with a flourish. He tried to go for the 11th, and he almost exited stage left. And amazingly, both men finished on 10. Is that all right, Heinz? No. Now, it's like... can you beat 12? I hope so, I have to. Which is the title that's been set so far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never did this, but I hope I can do it. Next up was Jukka Ahala of Finland, strapped and bandaged from top to bottom. We can also watch the performance of Heinz Olesch as well. Heinz on the left, after a good talking to by Philippa, was slower to start. But we had seen the result of Torfi Olofsson's speedy first 30 seconds, so perhaps this was good tactics. Ahala, lean and very muscular. Ahead on the schedule, just. The Finn really is a remarkable competitor. He's not massive in stature, but certainly has a tenacious character which simply doesn't know when to give up. So seven times each. Imagine trying to lift a washing machine above your head both men level and they know exactly what is required. The lead of 12 by Harold Collins. That's one lift every five seconds. And both men have it within their sights, but Heinz Olesch was slowing. Ahala appeared to get a second wind and just kept grinding out one or two extra repetitions. Olesch was unsteady. Yuko Ahala had drawn level with Collins in first place. Good performance though, you pleased with that? Yeah, very good. First day, I'm happy. Well done. Thanks. Samuelson, Sweden. Magnus Samuelson strode out onto the stage for his minute of purgatory, and as always, he looked ready to explode. <laughs> and when Sven Carlsen had the stage, he too was ready to go for the 12 big repetitions. Now, the Scandinavian nations really do love these strength contests. Powerlifting, weightlifting and bodybuilding are all big sports for them. And these two men are two of the very best, not just in their country, but in the world when it comes to lifting, pulling and pushing these huge weights. But Magnus is not a great lover of heaving these logs over his head, 105 kilos. Two meters tall does make it more difficult so it was almost inevitable that his score would be a little off the pace. Carlson was trying absolutely everything to get the log to arm's length. 
but he too was finding life difficult out there and had definitely lost his rhythm. As we said in the heats, if anybody ever teaches Samuelson how to lift weights correctly, then he could be brilliant instead of just being very good. But it was Magnus Samuelson who was going to be upset not to go any higher than nine repetitions. He was going to end up equal last with Derek Boyer. And Carlson was dramatic at the last repetition to finish off with 10. Unashamedly, his wife always proud of her man. Now the last competitor, leader after the truck pull, Fleming Rasmussen of Denmark. Two men are tied for the lead, Collins and Ahala with 12 reps. Oh, well, this is a fast and furious start for Fleming, but can he keep it going? He's throwing that log about as if it was a broom handle, and it weighs as much as two eight stone people. Well, he's halfway after only 17 seconds, and that's incredible. Surely he has to start slowing down. He's a little bit off balance now. That one was disallowed by the referee, Dougie Edmonds. He got it there. He's on 11 now. He must be in with a chance to win it. He's equal. It's a three-way tie. Now for one more. Oh, he thinks he's got it, but I think the referee says no. Oh, Dougie Edmonds has shouted 12. The referee's certainly not the most popular man here. And so 12, the magic number which no one could beat, and Fleming now has to share his points with Yoko Ahola and Iron Bear Collins. Fleming, I've got to say congratulations, first of all, but what was the problem? I don't know. That's the judge. Was Think. he saying you didn't lock out? Lock out? I was standing five seconds with the lock. If I thought that the, the lift wasn't OK, I could have told me one more. But despite that hiccup, he's still in a commanding position after two events. A four-point lead over Ahala with Heinz Olesch in third place. Well, this is desert weather for you. It's absolutely freezing cold. Nothing stops our events, though. And this next skill could come in very handy of a Saturday morning when you're desperate for a parking space. Car rolling. Even Basil Fulty didn't go this far. These cars, at the end of their lives, instead of being consigned to the scrap heap, are destined to be turned over by strongmen. The aim of the game is to flip them over through 360 degrees twice and then sprint to the finish line. And who knows, with the Americans being so used to such large automobiles, these could be the smallest cars they've ever seen. Yuko in second place overall, he's done very well. Heinz Olesch in third, trying to stay warm. How are you feeling after the last event? Well, uh, things like that happened and just have to go on. You seemed very angry at the time. Yeah, because it was so intense and uh, I, I don't care now. We we'll just have to move on. I think Rasmussen would be very upset if he missed the title by one point. However, watch this. It promises to be fast and furious. The first heat between Magnus Samuelsson and Derek Boyer. Derek amazingly in last place overall. Samuelsson in sixth. Now this big lift off the floor is the most difficult part of all. And Magnus is keeping the car rolling so easily. He's ahead and going for the second. This is phenomenal by the Swede. He's going for the line, he punches the air, that is fantastic. Derek Boyer a little way behind. He runs across the line, but what about Magnus Samuelsson? That is gonna take some beating. Magnus, congratulations, that was a very fast time. I think so. I think so. Well, it was a lot easier than truck, but I can tell you that much. Are the next pair already, Olofsson on the far side and Romans Bugmanis here. Disappointed at being down in ninth place after two events, and they go crashing into the car. Bugmanis it is who's a fraction ahead, and the roofs on those cars already beginning to cave in. Olofsson has got the car rolling over well now. Bugmanis appears to be a little bit stuck, and look at this. Dorothy finishes in 17.9, he's second at the moment. 
McManus hit a sticking point. He lost valuable seconds, 23.30, the slowest so far. Mark Filippi with the bandana, along with Sven Carlsen, the Norwegian who's lying in fourth place overall. Now this event may seem a bit crazy, but it's very exciting to watch. Aggression, power and speed are the key factors here. And Carlsen is really flying. He's completed the first 360 degrees very fast indeed. Filippi not too far behind. Carlsen is on his way though. It's very close to the lead just outside Samuelson's time. But he's in second. Mark Filippi will be in fourth place. Some disappointment though from Carlson. Frustrated he missed the lead by a fraction of a second. Mark will have to wait and see. You missed Fuck. it by just a whisker. How much was the time? A little slow. It was 16.59, so you're three tenths of a second behind Magnus right now. I'm not pleased with that. This was too slow, much too slow. Heinz Olesch over on this side and Chief Ironbear Collins. Hey. Sven Carlsen was really disappointed with his time, wasn't he? And Heinz Oles just about kicking the car over. The German is going extremely well. Harold has got a bit of work to do. And Heinz close to getting the final roll over. Now he's got a sprint, 1676. Just behind Sven for second place. Harold a little bit off the pace. That's the second slowest of the day. Heinz delighted with his time in third place. Magnus wow. Samuelsson wondering whether he can hang on to 10 points. Just Fleming Rasmussen and Yuka Ahola left. Fleming with an outright win and an equal first place to his credit so far. It's very close between the two. Both men chasing 16.20. They're both going fast. Rasmussen now in the lead by a fraction. Oh, I think Fleming thought he'd got that one. Ahal is going to win from behind. He gets fifth place. Can you believe it? He beats the Dane. It all went wrong in the last couple of seconds. Fleming has every right to be dismissive. He slipped down that board, earning only five points. Sweden's powerhouse Magnus shocks himself and takes the full ten. Were you a little surprised because there were some great guys in there? Yeah. Also, normally when you go first, Normally the cars go faster and faster because they become more round. So and it was a long, long wait to see it. It's not just the cars that are changing shape. The overall score is two. Rasmussen still leading, but the chasing pack is closing in. Yoko, that was a very exciting competition and very, very close. Did you expect that? Uh, yes, but I'm happy that I beat Fleming. Now he have. Uh, only four points more than I. We're in the middle of a desert dust storm for an old fashioned strength test that originated in Iceland, the Husafell stone. This weighs 163 kilos, that's 358 pounds. Legend has it that a farmer's wife in Iceland once carried a Husafell stone around and around a sheep pen to prove to the men that she was stronger than they are. No sheep pen today though, just a 50 meter course and the men have to go up and down it as far as they can. Now, Torvi is the favourite for this. He holds the world record. But if Magnus doesn't get a move on, I wouldn't put it past Christine to pick the stone up herself and carry it, just like that farmer's wife did. So the overall leader begins the long walk. Bergmanis, Collins, Boyer and Filippi have already gone. And out of that group, Raymond's Bergmanis leads with an excellent 75.17 metres. The weather here was atrocious about an hour ago. It's cleared up a little bit, but the temperature has dropped right down. Well, carrying rocks is a traditional event in Strongman, but none is bigger than this. It weighs about 25 stones. That's Fleming's own weight, plus a little bit more. It looks very uncomfortable, doesn't it? He's got a little way to go before he starts making the return journey. And that rock is getting lower and lower all the time. Oh, his forearms must feel like lead weights themselves now. Bergmanus's lead is halfway back up the course and Fleming Rasmussen is still moving well. Collins only managed 45 metres. 
and Rasmussen is very close indeed. He just needs a little bit more. Surely he can go further. Yes, he can. A great effort. Oh, it's getting lower and lower and oh, almost went there. Yes, 82 meters plus. Excellent performance. I mean, what's the most difficult thing about this event? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> it's really blocks for the air. It's really hard breathing. And you can see exactly why. Yuka Ahala has that rock very high on the chest. It must make taking deep breaths almost impossible. I hope somebody is telling him which direction to walk in too. He definitely can't see straight ahead. Derek Boyer scored 72 meters, that was good. And Ahala very rapidly making 50 meters and gripping the narrow part of the Husevel stone, trying to get a good grip. Rasmussen watching his lead disappear, perhaps. The fin is going very, very well. He's just about there. And yes, he's got it. A tremendous effort. Torfi Olafsson has just seen the lead extended to 84 meters and two centimeters by the fin. And Carlson hoping to stick the stone to his chest by the looks of it. Now, in fact, Torfi Olafsson is the world record holder for this event at over 90 meters. It is a traditional Icelandic event, so he knows it very well. It looks very stable coming down the course, and that's a long way to carry your shopping, let alone a weight 50 times as much. And that's 50 meters gone. It needed a little adjustment. And what has he got left now? Oh, this is a shock. Everybody expected Olafsson to perform well here. It's a real battle now, and it's gone. It's just over 60 meters and not good points at all. You're on about the same points as Heinz now. Uh, I better do better than him then. Yeah. Hope so, hmm? but we never know. Heinz Olesch now, and he's half a point ahead of Carlsen and Ahala overall. And in Germany, and especially in Bavaria, rock lifting is a traditional go, go, go. pursuit, and Heinz has done this one before. He's about 58 inches around the chest, so getting his arms wrapped around the stone is almost impossible. He's got weightlifting boots on. Yuko Ahala gripped it a lot lower to achieve the lead so far. And Heinz leaning back a bit, Brindis recording the moment. Halfway for the German. Oh, it's gonna go and it's gone. That's a big surprise again. He's lost a stack of points here. Magnus the last to go and Olesh down the leaderboard. Sven Carlsen, as always, is ready. And what about that resin on his chest? Will it help? Ahala perhaps set for his first win. Sven Carlsen already striding out, and this is fast by anybody's standards. He's got a good grip, that's for sure. Nana pacing him and guiding him as well. 50 meters without any problem, and the grip is still solid. He's slowing the pace a little, but that's not surprising. Gathering points almost with each stride he takes. He's literally hanging on by the fingernails now, and could be heading for the lead. Yes, he does. 86 meters. Here it comes again. Ahala, no reaction, but the win has gone. Just Magnus Samuelsson to go, and I suppose if anybody's got the perfect build for this, it's the Swede. Sven, you watched Yuko, you listened and you learned. I think so. It was a big advantage to go in the end here. So, same for Magnus now. I wouldn't surprise if he beat me. Really? But I'm happy anyway now. And Samuelsson already halfway down the first lap of the course. And Kristen will be around giving him every encouragement. There she is. This is a real team effort. Oh, he shot over the finish line. Come back, where are you going? Even Sven is helping him. 
The stone is lower now, but the distance is still coming. He's closer and closer to the lead. What a climax. The American crowd are really getting involved and Samuelson is still eating up the ground. Past Carlson, and he's got it. Oh yes, great stuff and a second win in a row. Available for rockeries or wall building, Magnus wins the second event in a row in fantastic style. The question is, will he keep it up? No matter what happened in the rest of the contest, I will remember this day. You look far more confident than you, I've ever seen you before. Yeah, because uh, I'm stronger and uh, also not so nervous anymore. You win some, you lose some. And that win has meant the top three men are just separated by a single point. Well, we reached the halfway stage, and Philippa invited all the competitors onto the world's fastest roller coaster. Strangely, it was only Raymond Bugmanis who took up the offer. Strongest man. Welcome to Fremont Street, downtown Las Vegas. This is the old heart of the city, and in 1995 they spent $70 million giving it a new lease of life. That canopy up above me holds 2.1 million light bulbs, covers five blocks of casinos, and at night explodes into one of the most dazzling light displays I've ever seen. Well, this is the setting for our next event, the squat, a classic powerlifting event. Five attempts each at ever increasing weights. The difference here though, is that no previous winners have even made it through to this year's final. They call Las Vegas the entertainment capital of the world. And I don't think our guys are gonna let them down. But big problems and emotion from the Carlsons, even before the event has started. Sven, tell us what happened. I was too bad of a warm up and I stretched something in my leg, so I tore some muscle fibers on the side. So I'm not able to squat. I'm not able to load, but I might be able to do some stiff leg deadlift tomorrow. So you still intend to stay in the competition? I won't try till I fall, till I fall down, so I, I, I want to try deadlift tomorrow anyway. That's a massive disappointment for him and a contender out of the way, it seems, for Yuka Ahala and the rest. Well, in fact, it's Yuko's fourth out of a maximum five lifts at 355 kilos. And just watch the intense effort and concentration. He'll squeeze it upwards slowly, but it's a good lift. Oh, and even a bit of blood from the nose as well, just to prove it's not easy. So more weight will go onto the machine now from 355 to 360 kilos, 792 pounds. Fleming and the rest putting on a great show here in Las Vegas, but that, after all, is what this city is all about. The spectators have already seen Samuelson, Olesh, Bagmanis, Olafsson and Boyer eliminated, and the Fijian the best of the bunch at 342 kilos. So with Carlson out of the way and Ahala passing, and it's a good lift. If he'd failed that, he was out of the competition, and that was a lot better. Now the Las Vegas man, Mark Filippi, 2.5 kilos more than Rasmussen, and it's just his third lift of this event, and he's been looking good throughout the competition. He's well suited for this event, and lots of experience in the squat, down like a rocket, and back up so easily, and this place is really buzzing now. Harold Collins goes through his ritual before each lift, and this is 365 kilos, his fourth attempt. And this will be for the lead. He's a former American powerlifting champion, so he likes this event just like Mark Filippi. The slot machines and the weights on top weigh in at over 800 pounds. 
Down he goes. He must get the fires parallel. The judges are conferring. And he's got it. Good luck. Harold Collins in the lead. And Mark Filippi with that big super suit. It's like being tightly wrapped up with thick elastic. Mark Filippi. 372.5 kilos. That's a weight that Rasmussen has passed. So tactics, the key now. Down we go. A big bang on the steel rods, but he's got it. Mark Filippi shows he's got what it takes. That's Mark Jr. and Mrs. Filippi. They've got no doubt at all. Rasmussen now at 380. Oh, gets a punch from Riku Kiri to liven him up a bit. Filippi has got one lift left. So this is a crucial lift for the Dane. 380 kilos is a massive weight. The equivalent to two and a half times the size of Harold. He's got to make this one count. Oh, he can't do it. He's going to finish in third place. Heavy, that's an understatement. But the overall leader, still in good shape. Now, if Harold Collins can get this 387.5 kilogram lift, the pressure goes back to Filippi. If not, the Las Vegas man will win this competition. This is a big moment for Harold. Now he can't do it. Mark Filippi wins 10 points for the man on home territory and Collins looks injured. He's safe in second place, but he's given us a bit of a scare. Nine points to him and an American one too. This competition is worse than playing roulette for the Americans. There can be no predictions as Felipe finds his winning streak and Iron Bear may have lost his hand. Mark, this yeah. event has been a big one for the USA, yeah, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, helped us out a lot. Yeah. More what we're used to. <laughs> <laughs> it's brought a smile to your face because it's been a very tough competition for you so far. Yeah, I knew the first half was going to be, you know, so... Yeah, I was hope I was waiting for the second half. If we could switch the, the the events around, I might have been a little happier. But you know, I'm just trying to do the best I can in the second half of the competition. And wherever I end up, I end up. At the moment, though, he's down in seventh place. It's still that man Rasmussen at the top. His lead extended to three points. Just three events to go. You're three points in the lead, though, and that's a very good lead at this stage of the competition. Yeah, and I think I have uh, two good events too left. So. Uh, this event, uh, I think it's really important for, to me, the last event today. I think I can beat Fleming. You do? I hope so. Where will you get the extra points from? Uh, deadlift. Well, the precious points may now be won or lost in the keg loading event. Each of those barrels weighs 105 kilos, a massive 16 stone. And just in case you're wondering, they're filled with water. Come here, Mamra! Sven Carlsen very disappointed to be out through injury, but lending his support to Magnus Samuelsson. Raymond Spagmanis on this side. Six kegs in all, weighing 16 stones. It's going to be very tough on the endurance factor here. But look at this, they're really making a race of it. Samuelsson two, Bagmanis two. Magnus just creeping ahead a little bit. Oh, that barrel's gone off for Samuelson. That's a big mistake. So, Bagmanis might not realize it, but he's gone ahead. That's the one that fell off. So the Latvian has got a good chance here. He can really score well if he could keep it going. Just one more to go. Samuelson is going to be kicking himself. But Latvia is coming in for victory here. 54.73, Bergmanis delighted. Samuelson struggling with the last one, and he's got it, 61.84. A little wry smile from Magnus. You guys are definitely not built for endurance. <laughs> You're too big. Try it. <laughs> no, thank you. No way. Or maybe I would with something half as light as this. Now it's Derek Boyer and Torfi Olofsson. Derek Boyer sprints away. I'm not sure Torfi Olofsson likes running very much, but Derek Boyer is pretty mobile.
Derek Boyer's second barrel coming very, very quickly indeed. Olofsson has got to get a move on. In view of the way Boyer competed in the heats, he's going to be very disappointed with his performance in the final. But where's the war paint gone? Olofsson, puffing and blowing. Boyer is flying, he's got two to go. And Torfi Olofsson, three to go. I think the leading time is going to be safe. Derek Boyer is running out of time. Oh, a little bit of hesitation there. You can see how much he's slowed down. Torfi just plodding along. It's safe there. Now come on, Derek. You need a good performance. The crowd are really cheering this man. Up we go. Oh, he can't do it. Allison is coming from behind to win it. Yes, 74.15, can you believe it? But Derek Boyer still struggling with the last one. I don't believe the crowd realized just how hard this is. Allison is shouting up, up all the way. The crowd now realizing just what agony this man must be in. He can't do it. Oh my goodness. A moment of pure sporting drama. Mark Filippi and Harold Collins have finished this event. Collins, injured of course, managed just one barrel. Mark Filippi, five in 67.49. Torfi Olofsson finished all six. Now for the top two. Rasmussen on this side and Ahola. This could be a real grudge matchup. Ready. Fleming top ever since event one. Yuko chasing and gaining in confidence all the time. And Fleming away, very well indeed. Yuko looking lean and mean. Every inch an athlete. Both guys going great guns at the moment. There's nothing between them. Rasmussen just creeping ahead, if anything. A little glance across there to Ahala, but he can't shake him. Both men are going very fast indeed. Rasmussen, the bigger of the two, but he's the one that's moving the best. He's even further ahead now with just one to go. Fleming is surely going to win yet another event. He's looking every inch a champion. 46-06, Ahala not too far behind. Fast enough to stay in second place, and the gap has gone to four points. Well, despite those cheering Vegas crowds, Magnus's mistake cost him dear, but helped Fleming climb back to the top with Yuko not so far behind. So we've got blood on the hands. You've got a bottle of oxygen there. And a big smile. <laughs> I don't understand how, how, can he, how can he be so fast. Can you seriously now start thinking about the title? No. No? Not before it's over. OK. See Sven. I don't know about Collins. Everything can happen. It certainly can, but with just two events left, it looks ominous for Ahala and the rest, with Fleming Rasmussen in such devastating form. Do you know that in Las Vegas, they used to hire bathing beauties to drape themselves around the poolsides of those big hotels on the Strip and attract the customers? Well, we've left. Las Vegas, the Neon and the Showgirls behind now and returned to the state line where there are no bathing beauties to distract anyone. In fact, all eyes are on the men for another powerlifting event, the deadlift. And with the Americans being so good at this kind of event, it makes the points really evenly spread. So as yet, we still can't predict anything. Well, Fleming said anything can happen and it has. This already his fifth and last lift in the event at 382 and a half kilos. If he fails it, he'll be down in seventh place. And Ahola can't wait for the failure. Over 800 pounds in this classic lift. He tries to squeeze it off the ground. It's above his knees, but he can't do it. Ahola surprised, and so am I. Torfi Ellison next with a big jump up to 420 kilos, a prodigious 925 pounds, just like a small car. His fourth lift of a maximum five attempts, and it's beautiful. Oh, yes. How do they do it? A very impressive lift indeed from Torfi. 
Mark Filippi now getting help with the straps to assist the grip. 425 kilos now. A massive strain on the bar. Oh, and powerlifting, definitely this man's forte. In the lead. That's his brother and he's delighted. Now Ahola, his fourth lift too oh, with the same down, weight. Hanalina encouraging him. I don't think he needs any encouragement. He's really psyched up. Oh yes! Look at that, so easy. And Hanalina looking more relaxed now. Fleming making the most of his rest. Raymond's Bergmanus out now, 427 and a half on the site where he ended up in the pool after winning the Flintstone lift in the heats. He loves this sort of competition. Mark Filippi preparing for his next lift. Ready! Raymond Bergmanus in a very good position to score highly here. Yes, he's done it. A little hesitation, but it goes up. Uh, no time for a swim though. Tolfi now tries 430. Six men have been eliminated so far. Felipe and Ahal are still in the competition, of course. Oh, it's too much. He'll finish fourth, and Bergmanis can't do any worse than third. Felipe now 432 and a half. Wife Tracy is all of a jitter. And Bill Kazmaier, three times world's strongest man, is here watching. Felipe with an enormous weight, and that is going to impress everybody here. There's just one lifter left with one attempt. And it's Yuko Ahola, just needing two and a half kilos more than Mark Felipe. It's just like a photo finish in a sprint race. Let's watch this closely and soak up the atmosphere. Oh, so easy in the end and looking capable of doing even more. Ten big points for Finland. Quietly confident, do you think? Well, we shall see. Yuko predicted he would do well in that event, so is it all over for Fleming yet? Now, the deadlift has made a huge difference to the possibility of you winning this competition. Yes, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. Is it enough now? Because I, I have to be in second place after after Fleming. If Fleming win, I have to be next one. For the first time since we started, Rasmussen is in second place. Only he or Ahala can win now. What a finish in prospect to find the new champion. And there it is, the final obstacle between the men and the title. So who's the expert's money on? Ahola. Fleming. Ahola. I think Fleming. Probably the fan. Ahola. Fleming. Yeah, I'm Ahola. He's very nervous. <laughs> Good. I can't wait for those two guys to go. But first of all, it's Raymond's Bugmanis and Colin Bryce, one of the marshals in the absence of Sven Carlson. And what a final event the organizers have concocted. This 200 kilo weight, first of all, over 25 meters. Bugmanis moving well. Round the giant Hummer all-terrain vehicle. He's got to move this 300 kilo tire out of the way. Big push there. And now the 3,000 kilo truck over 20 meters. Now, Olesh, Filippi and Boyer have finished already. And it's still Bugmanis pushing for all he's worth, driving those legs. He's got about five minutes to go. Bugmanis has given everybody a lot of pleasure in his performances here. He finished at 45.87, oh dear me. But that is the lead at the moment. And Colin Bryce did pretty well too. We're now down to the last four competitors. Samuelson on this side. Spectacular at times in his performance. Olafsson on the far side, consistently good. They're in third and fourth place overall. Olafsson on his way. Tristan cheering on the Swede. Olafsson first, that's a surprise. Now for the tyre. These tyres from Earth moving giant trucks. But Samuelson flipped it over. That was incredible. Now for the last 20 meters. Olsson just behind by a car length. Samuelson, 110% as always. 
Oh, he's going to get the glory in this heat. He's guaranteed to finish in third place overall. It's certainly going to be the fastest time. Olofsson is just behind, 43.80. Kristen confirms the fact he's in first place. Tremendous efforts rewarded by the crowd. The glory this time goes to Magnus Samuelsson, rewarded by his wife Kristen. What a great effort. This is it. Everybody at the Prima Donna Hotel can't wait to see Ahola and Rasmussen to decide the World's Strongest Man title. It's all come down to the very last event. And these guys have never let us down. Over the last few years, the climax to this contest has been enthralling. Magnus Werder Magnussen's reign is about to come to an end. And in a few moments time, a brand new name will be acclaimed the champion. Now Ahala just has to beat Rasmussen. And he's doing it in style at the moment. This is incredible, he's absolutely flying. Rasmussen's struggling a little bit. Samuelson's time is not an issue here. The main thing is to get points ahead of Fleming Rasmussen, who I think is destined to finish in second place. Rasmussen has definitely blown up. It's Ahala grinding out the last big effort against a man who's led for most of the final. As the sun begins to set in Nevada, it's also bringing to an end Fleming Rasmussen's title hopes Yuko Ahola has done it. Rasmussen looking dejected in finishing second place overall, but it is his best ever performance. Massive cheers for both men, and Rasmussen goes straight away to congratulate Ahola, who's already been hugged by Hanalina. And that's it, the strongest men and the biggest sports in the world. And how fantastic for Magnus. Another win bumps his points right up to bring him to third. Does this make up for the disappointment of last year? Yeah, because uh, last year I, I was really injured in my back. But it's no use to telling people that you're injured because then you, nobody believes you anyway. So it's just to go back home and fix it and come back. Samuelson philosophical in third place. Rasmussen a great runner's up spot and a dynamic finish for Finland's first ever World's Strongest Man. It was a decisive win. Now, Yuko, just listen to this. You are the World's Strongest Man. Unbelievable. <laughs> You're Finland's first ever as well, is yeah. that extra special? Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm the young, youngest, whatever. I'm 26 and I think before me was uh, Jamie Reeves, 27. I made a couple of mistakes and uh, that was uh, Joko's chance and he took it and uh, that's how it is. The role of honour is complete. The big prize goes to Yuka Ahala of Finland. <laughs>